I never dreamed that you would feel the way I do. I thought that I would know just what to say. But suddenly my voice is feeling very weak. If only my heart could speak. You're making me confused. I'm puzzled and bemused. I'm fuddled. Heart's been puddled by the thought that we're more than just a fling. Where did I put that ring? If only my heart could sing. If what was in my chest could be expressed, you'd understand. My view, but I could never teach myself the speech to say how much I love you. Hey, it's John Bear, so happy to see your beautiful face, and today we're gonna talk about the Canon 24 to 105 millimeter f4. This beautiful lens oh. is moderately wide at 24 millimeters, and it's moderately telephoto at 105. And as you saw in the intro, it pairs pretty well with the Pocket 4K, which is a Micro Four Thirds camera. But with the help of a speed booster, this EF lens gets new life on the Pocket 4K. First off, let's get some technical things out of the way. This lens came out in 2005, but a lot of people that I've talked to still use this lens regularly. Which means, yes, this is a very versatile lens. In fact, it might actually be one of the best travel lenses you could possibly pick up. Even though this lens came out in 2005, it still costs around $900. So it holds its value quite well. There are two versions of this lens. The newer version has improved image stabilization supposedly, but from what I've read on reviews online, people say that it's not very noticeable. So the main difference you're gonna get with the version 2 is that it's gonna have a zoom lock button which for me is important because this lens is a little old and the zoom is a little light so like look at this if I leave it here it goes down by itself so the zoom lock is definitely welcome now this is a very old lens it's shifted hands quite a bit uh, I happen to find it in my house it belonged to my dad so if I were to go out and buy this lens today I'd probably get the version 2 because it's not that much more expensive all right so let's get into the nitty-gritty of this lens what makes it great well it's the zoom range and it's very very sharp and finally it's image stabilized which for me this is the main feature of this lens and I'm gonna talk to you in this video a lot about the image stabilization especially how to make it work with your pocket 4k the only thing this lens does not have going for it is that it's it's f4 so some people might want a faster lens because they might be shooting indoors or they want some more of that bokeh but if you're shooting on the pocket 4k or the lumix gh5 or any micro four thirds camera with a speed booster here's the cool thing this lens goes to f 2.8 so when you have a lens that's f 2.8 can zoom from 24 to 105 millimeters it's sharp as attack and it's image stabilized oh, this lens has it all and speaking of the speed booster, yes, the image stabilization of this lens works with the speed booster, as you can see in these shots, especially this one here, where I'm tracking the head of the swan fully zoomed in. The lens is not jittery at all. Keep in mind, this is handheld with the Pocket 4K. A big problem for us using the Pocket 4K is that it doesn't have any image stabilization, but having an image stabilized lens helps to uh, put off some of the pain. For me, being able to get a shot like this fully zoomed in on my subject without any jitters is nothing short of a miracle, especially on the Pocket 4K, which is something I've never experienced before. I've never used the Pocket 4K handheld before because it simply isn't stabilized. But with this lens, I feel confident that I could use my Pocket 4K handheld. When I first tried this lens with the Viltrox Speed Booster, the stabilization did not 
work. So I went searching online and trying to find some answers to this. And some people said that they never got it to work. Other people said that it depends on the version of your Viltrox Speed Booster and the version of your Pocket 4K camera. And you need to have a firmware for both of these things that can communicate with the image stabilization still working. Pretty wild stuff. So after upgrading my speed booster and then finding it doesn't work and then upgrading my camera, finding it doesn't work and then downgrading both of them, somehow I managed to find a ver version for both of them that communicates together and everything seems to work. And right now I'm gonna tell you what it is. For the Viltrox speed booster, you need to have it at version 2.3. Don't worry if you already upgraded it beyond 2.3, you can still downgrade it by using the same installation process. You just drop the file onto the speed booster when it's connected with a USB. Once the file is copied, it's gonna automatically disconnect. Don't worry, the installation worked. Version 2.3 is not available on the Viltrox website anymore, but I found it easily by Googling around because this is the version that other people said works with most lenses. As for the Pocket 4K, you can't have the newest firmware. For me, I'm right now at 6 point four point nine and this is a huge downside for me because obviously you want your camera to be at the highest version that's available but you know now you can't so if Blackmagic gives out a significant update that uh, changes something fundamentally that I really want I'll have to think twice before downloading it because it means my stabilization won't work with this lens anymore but for now I'm very happy with what I have what I have is essentially a 24 to 105 millimeter lens that has a constant aperture at f2.8 that is stabilized and is very sharp that makes it possible for me to use my Pocket 4K handheld. This is going to be a lens that I'm going to be using a lot from now on. Filming those shots downtown for the intro was just an absolute joy for me. It was just so incredible for me to experience my Pocket 4K stabilized. This lens is magic. However, due to the problems of getting this to work with my Pocket 4K, I've reconsidered whether I should get a Pocket 6K that has a native EF mount or not. Because if you have a native mount, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. But when you have a native mount, you also won't have the benefits of a speed booster that makes this lens an F2.8. But for now, I'm gonna use this lens a ton. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I'm John Bear, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.